Hello and welcome to this Esri Ireland tutorial. My name is Selene and I will be showing you how to make an engaging and immersive story map from basics to advanced elements. I will be taking you through the steps that you can see on screen. We'll start off by setting up our story map. We'll move on to adding content, adding a map from ArcGIS Online, as well as using the sidecar. We will also take a look at creating maps within story maps, going through map tours and express maps. We will also have a look at what other kinds of media you can add to your story map. And finally, we will preview and publish the story map. But first, let's set up our story map. Story maps can be accessed from the waffle in your ArcGIS Online account in this top bar here. Or you can visit storymaps.arcgis.com and sign in from there. To create a new story map, you can just click the green button up here, new story. But first, I just want to draw your attention to some of the resources down here in the bottom left. You might find some useful things. I would highly recommend exploring other people's stories here. It'll give you a lot of inspiration about what you can do with story maps. You've also got tutorials and how to plan stories and that kind of thing. You have a few options when you start making a story map. I'm going to be choosing the start from scratch because I'm going to be going through these other options later. First, give your story a title and a short description. Also, if you want, you can add in an image as a cover. And you can choose a few design options. So I'm going to change the cover option uh, to this one. The image shows up quite large. Um, the navigation I would highly recommend using as it allows the reader to navigate through different chapters that you've included. I'll show you how to include chapters. And finally, for a theme, I'm going to choose this ridge line. It's green, which goes well with my topic. So now I'm going to start writing my story. I'm going to make my first chapter called Introduction by clicking on the plus button, going to text, and from the drop down menu here, selecting heading one. As you can see, the first chapter has popped up in my navigation bar. And now I just want to put in a little bit more text under introduction. So this time I'm going to go with paragraph. To add a map that you have already prepared, you again go to your plus button and select map. I'm going to select the map that I want and I can change a few of the settings, like switching off layers that I don't want to be seen and moving the map around. You have some options with sizing. So this is the medium. You've also got large that takes up the whole screen and you've got small, but I would like it to sit snugly with the text that I have beside it. I can use the th six dots here to drag it up uh, with my text. Oops. Next up, I want to show you a sidecar, which is one of the immersive elements that you can add. I'm going to choose the docked version. As usual, we can put in our text, but this time I'm going to choose heading two because I don't want it to add a whole new section for this little piece of text. I want to add an image. And to add another element to my sidecar, I just click the little plus button here and I repeat. Now that we have some of the basics out of the way, let's take a look at what we can do with maps in Story Maps. Again, I go to my plus button and I'm going to scroll down and select Map Tour. This time I'm going to start with a feature service. This is when you take an already existing layer and you put it into a map in Story Maps. 
So I'm going to choose locations of sacred oaks. This brings in my point layer and the names of the points. There's no images there because I haven't attached any photos to these points. We can also make a map tour using the start from scratch option. I'm going to choose the explorer option and I'm happy with the list. From here, I simply click on the untitled tour point. I can add a title. Add a location by bringing up the map and zooming into the area where I want to pop my tour point. I set the zoom level and I can add an image if I want. Next, I'm going to show you how you can create your own express map within Story Maps, as well as adding map actions. I've opened up a sidecar here as that allows me to add in my map actions later. So over here, I'm going to add map and I'm going to select new express map. Up at the top here, where you've got a few drawing options of points, numbered points, lines, freehand drawing, etc., as well as um, notations here. I've zoomed into the area where I want to pop my point. I'm going to select the point icon, pop in my point, give it a name. And for style, I'm going to use my own symbol. And click done. I also want to add an annotation, so I'm going to click the big T here, type in my annotation. And just for demonstration, I can also put in an arrow. And if I hover, I can get a little and drag it over. If I want to get rid of it, I just lift up and I can pop it in the bin, but I don't want to. So I've added all these points, but I want my reader to be able to click a single button and to zoom in to each of these points to see where they are. For that, I'm going to put in some map actions. Zoom to Ryan Baru's oak tree and edit and I'm going to zoom into the tree Add a bit. nice I'm going to do this for the other points as well now my reader is able to click on each of the points and zoom around the map Story Maps does, of course, support media other than maps and text. If you want to add a video, for instance, you have a couple of options. You can either upload uh, through a video file that you have stored on your computer, or you could embed a video from the internet. I'm going to choose this one about oak trees in Ireland. And I just add it in and resize as I wish. I'm going to be adding in an image gallery for my reader to browse through, but while they're doing that, I'd like them to have something to listen to. So I've downloaded this audio file of a forest soundscape from the internet, and I'm just going to upload that. Image galleries allow you to upload multiple photos at the same time and allows the reader to browse through them. I'm going to select a few at the same time to make uploading easier. Uh, some of these might be doubled up, but that's OK. Add them all in and they might take a second to load, but we can rearrange them afterwards. Now that the photos are loaded in, I can make a few changes um, using the little settings option here. And I'm going to go with film strip, which lets the reader flick through the photos as they please.
At this point, I've added in all of the content that I wanted to, and the story has come together quite nicely under all of my different chapters. However, I'm not really able to see what the story looks like as I've got all of these extra bits um, for editing. But if I just click the preview button, um, Story Maps will take me to this other interface where I can have a look at what it would look like for the reader. And I can scroll through and make sure I'm happy with everything. Make sure that the map actions work um, and that I like how everything's looking. Once I am, um, I can make any more final edits and then I can publish my story map. To publish my story map, I click the publish button up at the top here and I can set my sharing level. I can choose private just for myself, organization, which will be anybody in my organization or for the whole public. I'm gonna choose organization. And with this option, I can also choose groups in my organization and I can allow people to duplicate my story map. Duplication allows anyone with access to your story map to copy your story map. It's great for brands as colors, logos, themes, and structures can easily be replicated and reused. For anyone else, it's a great way to get a good head start on building your narrative. Finally, do remember that anything stored in ArcGIS Online that is used in your story map will have to have the same sharing privileges as the story map. Otherwise, you will be asked to update the sharing level when you publish. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you've learned something useful.